Hello everyone. I thought I'd take a leaf out of John's book this week and choose a psalm to reflect on. It's Psalm 126, one of the four set for Monday. Now some psalms are songs of lament or desperation, but not this one. In fact, it's quite the reverse, speaking as it does about restoration. I'll read it and then offer you my thoughts on it. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then were we like those who dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with songs of joy. Then said they among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has indeed done great things for us, and therefore we rejoiced. Restore again our fortunes, O Lord, as the river beds of the desert. Those who sow in tears shall reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, bearing the seed, will come back with shouts of joy, bearing their sheaves with them. It's very unlike me to ever refer to a sporting occasion. I'm hopelessly uncoordinated and have very little competitive spirit. On rare occasions, however, I get caught up in the national mood. You won't be surprised that I'm referring to last Wednesday and the semi-final of the UEFA tournament. Maddeningly, of course, by the time you watch this, we'll all know whether or not England are the 2020 winners. But let's pretend that hasn't happened yet. Last Wednesday, it was as if we'd won the big prize. Supporters, and who in England wasn't, apart from the few thousand disappointed Danes, supporters expressed the kind of emotion that the psalmist writes of in today's reading. Then were we like those who dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with songs of joy. A dream come true. Similar things were said by two of the competitors in this year's Wimbledon when they won their matches against the odds. Emma Raducanu and Herbert, or Hubert rather, Hjokac, both used that expression. Mostly, of course, we ascribe such wonderful realisations of dreams to our own efforts. Gareth Southgate will long be lauded for turning around the fortunes of the English football team, as will the team members themselves. And the two new young tennis stars will attribute their wins to their own efforts and to their trainers and supporting teams. I don't think we'd criticise them for that, would we? Great sporting spectacles, especially when it's our team that emerges victorious, evoke an upsurge of joy in our hearts. And the football and the tennis do us good after 16 gruelling months in our national and indeed global life. Frustratingly, and somewhat alarmingly, just when we were beginning to think that COVID-19 had been well and truly contained, if not actually shown the door, cases had been rising again. But we are somewhat reassured by our government and our scientific and medical experts that, unpleasant though the virus unquestionably is, the proportion of sufferers in hospital is markedly down, and the number of deaths significantly so, thanks to the vaccination programme. Well, to whom do we ascribe this growing success in dealing with the pandemic? Most people would instantly say to the scientists, to the doctors and the nurses, even to the government, faltering though its decision-making may have been at times. Christians, you and I, though, while agreeing with that general assessment, might, and in my opinion should, ascribe our gradual return to national health not only to the people I've just named, but to our loving God. We've not witnessed a biblical miracle of healing. There have simply been too many sick people for the sort of healing Jesus did, or even for similar actions by Christians with the gift of healing in his name, laying hands on the sick. But, han but hands have been laid, many of them with hypodermics in them, or tubes, or monitoring wires, or refreshing swabs, or with just a moment's caress, albeit with neoprene gloves on. Whether they knew it or not, those who minister to the sick, often the desperately sick or dying, were doing God's work. 
I said several times in earlier reflections that the miracle of our recovery, which has come through the world's scientific and medical professionals working at a pace and with a success which we would have believed impossible until they proved us wrong, it's a dramatic sign of God at work. It's what he wishes the people of the world to do together, to bring peace and prosperity in equal measure to all. In other words, to love one another. It's our job as Christians to proclaim God's hand in this restoration. Will people believe us? Well, a few will, just as a few will come to believe more widely in Jesus and in his saving love. It does seem, though, as if the world's coming to faith is going to be a slow process. In the meantime, as the virus is day by day and week by week beaten down, let we who know God do as the psalmist writes and say with conviction, the Lord has indeed done great things for us and therefore we rejoice. Through the hospital's staff's God-given abilities, God is restoring our fortunes, our well-being. There have been rivers of tears cried around the world for almost all of the last two years as loved ones were suddenly stricken and taken from their families. But there will be tears of joy when the government is finally able to declare, without fear of significant risk, that the normal, natural life of society can fully resume. And as we shed those tears of joy, as we hug one another, do our little joyful dances, celebrate with festive food and drink, let us give the glory first to God for guiding us through it all. Some will naturally find such words insensitive or callous or even an affront if they are among the hundreds of thousands whose lives have been torn apart by loss due to Covid. And I must gratefully admit that I'm not among them. I don't mean to lack deep sympathy for those for whom Covid-19 has brought deprivation in the most absolute sense. The pandemic has afflicted the human race in ways that will echo down the future centuries. Just as we still remember the Black Death of 1348, the Great Plague of 1665, and the Spanish flu epidemic of 1918 and 1919 today. In 1665, families forced to self-isolate had the words, Lord have mercy, painted in red on their front doors. And despite the frightful death toll, the Lord did have mercy, the nation recovered and went on to prosper. In 2021 we can also see the signs of God's mercy. Of course we're impatient, we want our lives back. It has shown us how much we need one another, not only those who have been taken from us, but those for whom we've been separated for so many months. We can go on praying, as does the psalmist, Restore again our fortunes, O Lord, as the riverbeds of the desert. In his compassion, God will comfort the bereaved and bind up their deep emotional wounds. There will always be scars, and lost love will always be remembered. But those who sow in tears shall reap with songs of joy. When we sing those songs, let us remember that all healing, physical, mental and spiritual, comes from God, in whatever way he delivers it to us. And let us remember to give him back the thanks and the glory which he deserves for restoring the fortunes of the world. I feel the need to finish with a prayer, or rather a sequence of prayers. The Church of England has a wonderful library called Common Worship, from which almost all our services are taken. And there's a special volume called Pastoral Services, which deals, among other things, with the ministry to the sick and the dying, as well as giving the structure of funeral services. Here is the prayer sequence used, though not often in my experience, for the laying on of hands for the sick. I'm going to put the words of the responses on the screen when it's time to say them. So please do join in, if you want to. Blessed are you, Sovereign Lord, gentle and merciful, your anointed Son brought healing to those in weakness and distress. He broke the power of evil and set us free from sin and death, that we might become partakers of his glory. 
remember in your mercy all for whom we pray. In the fullness of time complete your gracious work, that we may be restored in your image, renewed in your love, and forever praise your great and holy name. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Holy God, in whom we live and move and have our being, we make our prayer to you, saying, Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Grant to all who seek you the assurance of your presence, your power, and your peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Grant your healing grace to all who are sick, that they may be made whole in body, mind, and spirit. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Grant to all who minister to the suffering wisdom and skill, sympathy and patience. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Sustain and support the anxious and fearful and lift up all who are brought low. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Hear us, Lord of life. Heal us and make us whole. Amen.